Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present William Powell in The Escape of Lacey Abbott, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Mr. Wilcox, I am from the SPCTC. I've come here to register a strong protest. Uh, now, wait a minute. What is this SPCTC? The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Camels. Oh. You can't imagine how you've distressed the dear dromedaries. You mean because I say Autolite stay full batteries need water only three times a year in normal car use, the camels feel bad because they have to have water more often? They positively wince when they hear it. And you should see their poor, dear faces drop. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Perhaps I could play up the fact that Autolite Stay Full batteries have fiberglass retaining mats protecting every positive plate. Or I might even dramatize the fact that in recent tests based on SAE life cycle standards, Autolite Stay Full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without Stay Full features. Well, anyway, one thing I definitely will say, friends, it's your pays to see your Autolite battery dealer for an Autolite Stay Full battery. Because... You're always right with Autolite. And now, with the escape of Lacey Abbott and the performance of William Powell, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Hey, you. Yes, you. A position of authority. Come here. You can always tell by their voices. Sign out. Commanding. The smaller the authority, the more commanding the voice. You hear me? Yes, sir. Sign out, you said. Here? Right below where you signed when you came in. Of course. <laughs> A perfect forgery. I beg your pardon? Well, I mean, your signature is almost an exact copy. You object? Why, no, sir. You think you're talking to one of your, your lunatics upstairs? No. Sir. Always call me sir. Good day. Uh, good day, Mr. Wesley, sir. Outside now, on the steps. There's the street, the traffic. Walk slowly. No need to hurry, no need at all. That's right, light a cigarette. Must be some in the pockets, yes. What brand of the late Mr. Westland smoke? Excellent, light it. Might have carried a lighter. Uh, no need to run. There won't be an alarm for at least 20 minutes. One look back over the shoulder, casually. It's pleasant to be on the outside, looking in, after two years in the psychopathic ward in Bellevue. Oh. <laughs> well... This is a restaurant. Are you kidding? And you're a waitress, a lovely waitress. Look, do you or don't you want something to eat? I'd much rather look at you. <laughs> look, mister, I get off at 1 a.m., but right now the boy... I'm going to take you out of all this. Oh, sure. Furs, diamonds, warm against your skin. Hey, let go my hand. Your name is Faye, huh? Embroidered on your uniform, <laughs> Faye. Faye, listen to me. Now, look, Romeo. Listen, this will be the biggest thrill of your life. I just escaped from Bellevue. What? I'm Lacey Abbott. I've been in a psychopathic ward in Bellevue for two years. You don't say. Nicholas Westland, my lawyer, came to see me. And when we were alone, I strangled him to death. Let me go. Stand still. I changed clothes with him. I signed his name on my way out. It'll be in the papers. I'm laughing. And I'll back to tonight's in a sanctuary mystery. I had a wife once, Kate. They say I killed her. So I must have killed her. Sure. You killed her. No, I didn't. Martin Avery killed her. Sure. Martin Avery killed her. You just sit there while I get a glass of water. I'll be back. We must see Mr. Avery. Oh, yes, definitely Mr. Avery. Anyone home? All right, all right, all right, all right. Hello, Pop. Now, what do you want? Got something you want to hawk? 
Don't bother me with it. Everybody's selling, nobody's buying. You got me wrong, Pop. I'm a buyer. I want to buy a forty-five automatic. Got a permit? No. You from the police? Nah, Pop. Let's see your wallet. All right. Uh -huh. Lawyer, huh? Uh, that's right. Okay. Fifteen dollars. Thanks, Pop. I won't forget this. And neither will <laughs> a friend of mine. Park Avenue. A little late evening call on Martin Avery. There's the apartment house. First class, Mr. Avery. Very first class. May I blow your brains out, Mr. Martin Avery? Thank you, sir. How do they say it in the movies? You want it in the belly or the back? Extra, extra, paper, murder in Bellevue, lunatic escape, extra. Boy? Paper? Yes. Just out? Yeah. Extra. Keep the change. Thanks. Aren't you uh, scared with a lunatic running loose? In New York? <laughs> murder in Bellevue, <laughs> Door unlocked. Hmm. How thoughtful. Lavish apartment, Mr. Martin Avery. Lush. Not like it used to be. All right, now, darling. You just go to bed. No need for you to stay up because I've got work to do. Now, let me get these toys off the floor. John, had a big day. So you're not alone. This must be the study, yes. Come right in, Mr. Avery. Please do. Well, I have to come out and get you. Lacey. Shut the door. Quietly. Lacey. Shut it. You, you're in Bellevue. But you see, I'm not. They'll find you. Look, my picture on the front page. Lousy picture. I could go to work in a delicatessen on the east side, live in a hole, never leave Manhattan. Who'd find me? They'd find you. They'll find you first. Now, I don't expect anything from you, Lacey. You're a sick man. I feel sorry for you, but I have my wife and child, my son, here in the apartment. Now, I don't want... This gun? <laughs> it's just to keep your voice down. It's a toy. It can't hurt. It kills. Pull the drapes over the window. What? Cover the windows. Ah, will there be any dawn? That's the question. If there is, you'll see it come up the way I had to see it for two years. On thick, soft, blind walls. All right, now what do you want? I waited a long time for this, a long time. Put down the gun. Oh, wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't you just? All right. Now, after all, Lacey, we were friends once. You used to see better, Martin. What? Take another look at the paper. Westland? You killed Westland? Yeah, you can always find another lawyer. Shouldn't upset you. He wasn't your lawyer. He was mine. Never liked you. Always liked me. He was trying to help you. He did. What do you want with me? Company. Company? That's what I missed most of all, Martin. Can you believe that? company. Two years, no one to talk to. Oh, the doctor, sure, but not really anyone. Two years, Martin. I'm, I'm sorry, Lacey. I... How is everything? We're going very well. I have to admire you, Martin, standing there looking into this 45. You're not even blinking. It takes nerve to face a madman. See in the paper, that's what they call me, a madman with a gun in his hand. You never know what a madman will do, Martin. It takes nerve to stand there looking at me like that. No expression. Cold. They should put a drink in your hand and photograph you. Oh, yes, we could read the magazines in Bellevue. Those that wouldn't excite us with the staples removed. But, Martin, you're not listening to me. You're watching the door. Relax, Martin. It's going to be a long night. Maybe you won't see the end of it. It depends. It depends on whether you say the things I want to hear. Whether you do things I like. It's up to me. Yeah. I waited a long time. 
Now, it's up to me. Autolite is bringing you William Powell in the escape of Lacey Abbott. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Well, Mr. Wilcox, have you made up your mind? About camels, you mean? You bet I have. And? You can tell your camel friends that Harlow Wilcox will never again shame them with Autolite Stay Full batteries, the batteries that need water only three times a year in normal car use. Oh, they'll be overjoyed. You can undroop the dreary dromedaries by reporting that Wilcox will no longer imply that Autolite Stay Full batteries are ruining camels' go-without-water reputation. How elated they'll be. <laughs> From now on, I'll merely mention that Autolite Stay Full batteries have fiberglass retaining mats at every positive plate for longer battery life. Recent tests, in fact, based on SAE life cycle standards, show that Autolite Stay Full batteries give 70% longer average life than batteries without Stay Full features. So get an Autolite Stay Full battery, friends, at your Autolite battery dealers. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our star, William Powell, with John McIntyre in The Escape of Lacey Abbott. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Look at him. Look at Martin Avery, standing alone in the study of his better homes and gardens apartment. Alone, with only me to keep you company. Yes, everything must be going exceptionally well for you. But I notice as I move about the study, turning off the lamps, that there's a trace of perspiration on your forehead. Does it affect you just a little? Being alone with a madman and a gun at night? What's taking place behind the steady eyes, Martin? Are you thinking? That would be fatal. That was my mistake, thinking too much. Watch me, Martin, that's right. I want you to keep watching me. But then you can't help but think about it. Think about what? Whatever comes into your mind as you watch me. The police will be here for you, Lacey. But why should the police want me? You killed a man. Yes. But you killed a woman. Now listen, Lacey. I can help you. I'll get you some of my clothes. I can call a cab. Get you to a small hotel somewhere where they won't recognize you. Don't talk like that. Everybody talks to me like that. You just come along with me. We know best. Lacey, it's just a matter of time. Answer it. Go on. But watch what you say. And hold it out here so I can hear it, too. Hello? Mr. Martin Avery? Yes, speaking. I'm Mrs. Nicholas Westland. I don't know if you've heard. Lacey Abbott escaped. My husband... Yes, I, I saw the papers. I'm sorry. Well, I didn't know. I thought I'd better warn you. Nick... Nicholas told me how much the man hated you. Thank you for calling, Miss Westland. I hope I'm... Good night. Good night, Miss Westland. Are uh, you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Good night. You can hang up, Martin. Murderer. Please, Martin. You know, I'm not responsible for what I do. You're as responsible as anyone. You knew what you did when you killed Westland. Now, you're going to say I'm not crazy? You know what I mean. I'm either responsible or I'm not. If I'm responsible, then I'm a murderer. If not, then Nicholas Westland, Westland's death was an unfortunate accident. But that was all taken care of in court two years ago. Remember? You testified against me. I told the truth. Did you? Yes. I was the only one that knew you were lying, Martin. You know I told the truth. Where are your wife and your boy sleeping, Martin? Oh, you're interested now. For the first time, there's something behind those cool eyes that I can see. Get out. What time is it? Eleven? Eleven o'clock. 
six hours until dawn. We should find out quite a lot before then. Quite a lot. Should I answer it? Answer it. Hold the receiver up, that's right. Just like before, so that I can hear. Go ahead. Hello? Martin Avery? Yes? Uh, this is Lieutenant Creekmore, police. What, what is it, Lieutenant? Is, uh, is everything all right up there? Yes, everything is all right. You're sure? Yes. Have you uh, heard that Lacey Abbott escaped from Bellevue tonight? I saw it in the late paper. Oh, and you know about Nicholas Westland. Yes, it was a tragedy. Yeah, well, we thought Abbott was getting better, but, well... It's too bad. The reason I called you, you know how Lacey Abbott feels about you. Uh, he may try to get you. You think so? Well, he might try, but you don't have to worry, Mr. Avery. I have four of my best men covering the front and rear entrances to your apartment house. I... If he shows, we'll get him. Good night. Solicitous. We're fortunate in having such a solicitous police force. Now, listen, Lacey, I played your game. Now, let me get you out of here. You go down to the second floor landing. I'll call the men up from downstairs, tell them you're up here, and that'll give you a chance to get out. You didn't answer me, Martin. Where are your wife and son sleeping? In the back bedroom? Through that door and... Straight back, down the hall. The nursery? Why, do you... The nursery? Just off the bedroom. How old is your boy? He's a year and six months. Uh, I remember somebody told me that you were married while the trial, my trial, was in progress. Yes. One year for the trial, two years in the psychopathic I, ward. I, I wish there was something I could do for you. Oh, Please. there is. What? Just tell me, why did you kill my wife? Ah, you can see the sweat now. Yes, and in a minute he'll be pulling a handkerchief from his pocket and wiping at it. It's taken a lot to shake you, Martin. You've had it all your own way so long. The money, the good life, the good married life. Tell me! You waken them, quiet! Let me tell you a little story. A bedtime story. Listen to me, Lacey. Once upon a time, there were two men who went into business together. The business prospered and things looked pretty good. Each partner had 50% of the stock in the company. And then along came a big bad menace, a corporation that wanted to buy them out. One partner wants to sell, the other partner no. The partner that said no had a wife. Let's call her Kate. And it seems his stock was negotiable in Kate's name as well as his own. You don't leave. Shut up. The partner that wants to sell, that's you, pulled a fast one while I'm out of town. And you got Kate to sign away everything. But before I got back, she saw what you were doing. And right there, right there was where she disappeared. No, now listen to me, Lacey. And I wonder who it was that saw to it. I wonder who it was. That killed her. You're still out of your mind. That's just a fantasy. Just a fantasy, huh? I suppose it's just a fantasy that at the inquest, a few well-chosen words from you started them looking at me, wondering about me, wondering why I was away, or what I'd done with the body. Lacey. A fantasy that had almost killed me to lose her. Yes, I was out of my mind then. And again, your few well-chosen words. I'd noticed he hadn't been himself lately. But I just thought it was overwork. You've got to listen. Thanks, now. partner. I do thank you. And I stand ready to repay you, Martin. Where's her body? I don't know. Martin. It was never proven she was dead. Let's say it was taken for granted. I, I did everything I could for you. Now, why don't you? Four it... hours until dawn. But I can see it now, Martin. If you try hard enough, you can see it too. On the wall. Give me the gun. <laughs> Advanced psychology, huh? You must have been studying. Give me the gun. Response to the command. Isn't that the way it goes? Response to the command. Sometimes work the impossible. The subject will sometimes obey your command against his better judgment. Give it to me. No, Martin. Give it to me. Uh, you can do better than that. Hey. Oh, more noise. Someone might come in to see. That's better. You know, I could have killed you. Why didn't you? brave man, Martin Avery. You can't take that away from him. That's why it takes thought. Watch me, Martin. I'm walking to the door. That's right. Don't miss a move. See, I'm locking the door so there'll be no sudden intrusion. What would you do if I walked over to that door, unlocked it, walked out? 
first I'd shoot you in the shoulder. Or the leg. And then maybe the other shoulder. I don't want you dead. Not right away. I'd never find out what I want to know. Lacey, can't you understand what you're doing? I never harmed you. I swear it. I swear it. Oh, no. Martin, can you hear me? You better answer. Yes, I can hear you. Watch what you say. I can shoot right through that door. Are you all right? Martin? Yes. Please, honey, I'm finishing something important. Well, come to bed. In a little while. Why did you lock the door? Why? Why, well, I don't remember. I just did. Are you feeling all right, darling? Yes. Yeah. Please, I'll be finished soon. Is there someone in there with you? Martin. No. Why, well, I, I thought I heard I, I was... Go back to bed. Open the door, Martin. I want to see that you're all right. Open it, no. I'll stand right behind the door. Get rid of her. Martin! Is anything wrong? No, darling. Please, go back to bed like a good girl. I'll be alone. Well, all right. But it's after three o'clock. Sit at the desk, Martin. Let me see the light on your face. Are you happy with her? Yes, I see you are. How is she like Kate? Is she like Kate at all? Oh, but she's your wife, and she's Kate to you. Does the light trouble your eyes? It glares. Just a little light. But it glares white in the dark as you stare at it. Beyond that pool of light, everything is black, Martin. Black as it is in me. Black. Stare into the black. Now, what do you see? What do you see? I see her, too. Everywhere I look. Everywhere. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes. Or it prospers. And anon, like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two, is gone. Omer Kayam, Martin. Ah, she's beautiful, Martin, your wife, beautiful. Leave the wise to talk. One thing is certain. But life flies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. The flower that once has blown forever dies. Dies. Dies! You wouldn't do that. You couldn't. I could, Martin. I could. No, she had nothing to do. Say it. Money. I, I'd give you money. Enough so you can find your way out. They can't do anything to you if you have money. That's not what I want to hear. Where is Kate's body? I don't know. Tell me. I can't. Through the door and down the hall. No. Just off the bedroom. Not, not the boy. You can't, Lacey. Tell me. I, I can't. Lacey. Westland speaking. Yes, yes. I know, Commissioner. And I'm glad you had the faith to play along with us. I know, yes. It was pretty extreme. Here, I'll let you talk to Lieutenant Creekmore. Oh, thank you. Hello, Commissioner. Avery's wife and child? Oh, they're okay. I got a little scared when Abbott fired those two shots in the ceiling. Yeah, I know. But that's what got the confession out of Avery. I know he shouldn't have brought the gun. We didn't bargain on that. Oh, yeah, we got it. It's all on tape. Uh, listen. All right, play it back, boys. 
Uh, I'm just playing the good part. It doesn't matter now. Nothing matters now. You were wrong, Lacey. It was Kate that came to me. She wanted to leave you. She thought she wanted me. It was her idea to sign the stock over to me. Everything. I kidded her along, but she found out about Anne. Anne. It doesn't matter now. I tried to talk to Kate. An argument. We had a fight. I, I didn't mean to, but it was an accident. I killed her. I fixed it so they'd suspect you. It wasn't hard. It was better than I thought. You, you seem to be out of your mind. Where did you put a body? I've kept it until... All right, boys, that's enough. Did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd never have cracked Martin Avery any other way. You know, they wanted to release Lacey Abbott six months ago, why they said he was as sane as I am. But I'm glad we waited till he had this worked out in his head. Uh, you'll have my full report tomorrow. Yeah, good night, and thanks, Commissioner, for letting us try it. Well... What's the matter, Mr. Abbott? Well, you should be feeling pretty good about all this. Your plan worked out great. Well, you're clear. What difference does that make? He said Kate came to him. Kate came to him. <laughs> Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, William Powell, with John McIntyre. Oh, Mr. Wilcox, you've made the camel kingdom ecstatic. And have you ever seen an ecstatic camel, Mr. Wilcox? No, I haven't. But if you like beautiful sights, take a look at this Autolite Stay Full battery. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And it's only one of more than 400 outstanding products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many makes of America's finest cars. Batteries, spark plugs, generators, coils, distributors, starting motors, and bullseye sealed beam headlights. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good Ask for and insist on Autolite, original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next Thursday for Suspense, an unusual bit of casting that we think will intrigue you. Our stars will be radio's usually happy couple, Ozzy and Harriet. The play is called Mr. Diogenes, and it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense! Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Escape of Lacey Abbott is an original radio play by Gilbert Thomas. Will, uh, William Powell appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of East Side, West Side, starring Barbara Stanwyck, James Mason, Van Heflin, and Ava Gardner. In the coming weeks, you will hear such stars as Rosalind Russell and Marlena Dietrich. And don't forget, next Thursday, same time, Autolite will present Suspense, starring Ozzie and Harriet Nelson. You can buy Autolite staple batteries, Autolite resistor or regular spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts, at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Your help is needed to stamp out dreaded infantile paralysis. Give now to the March of Dimes. Remember, every dime or dollar you give may help to save you or your loved one from affliction. In Canada, give to the Canadian March of Dimes, Box 10, Toronto. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>